Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Build at Home. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, coming to you from my home in New York City. Today, I'm going to be chatting with chef and TV personality, Carla Hall. But before we chat with Carla, I want to re remind you guys about the campaign No Kid Hungry. Uh, there's a lot of kids who depend on school for their daily meals. And because of school cancellations due to COVID-19, 574 million school meals have been missed. So if you're looking for a way to help, if you want to chip in and help these communities, Make sure you visit nokidhungry.org for more information. It's a really amazing organization and we can really help out these families. Now I wanna welcome Carla Hall. Carla, hi, where are you? How are you? Hi, Brittany. Well, I'm in DC and um, I'm in my little mini craft room. You see how <laughs> craft back here, cause it's all over here. <laughs> we put the crafts to the side. Um, so how long have you been social distancing and um, how's it going? Um, I've been here since the 7th of March. Okay. And uh, it's going well because I travel so much. It, I feel like I'm dating my house and I get to see my husband and we get to spend time together. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. So this is what it's like being at home. <laughs> yeah. What have you been doing the past the time? Have you uh, started any new hobbies? Okay. I'm obsessed with my air fryer. You know what, Carla? I was going to bring that up. I saw it on your Instagram. <laughs> and I'm obsessed with your air fryer. Okay. I've only posted one eighth of the experiments that are happening <laughs> with my air fryer. And there's so much more. And I said, I don't want to overwhelm people. The, the funny thing is when I tried those cheese and crackers and you can see it on my yeah. Instagram. And I love that when people say, well, the oven works or toast the oven. I'm like, I know that works. That's why I wasn't doing it in there. <laughs> I, I want to push the boundaries of this appliance. And I have a very simple air fryer. It doesn't have bells and whistles. It, you know, it has one function. It doesn't have like, you know, all these different kinds of settings. But it's been really fun, and and I think it's it's a time to just play. Yeah, I saw you make a grilled cheese sandwich, girl, and air fryer, and, and I have to say, it no, it looked crispier than any grilled cheese I've ever tried to make on a stovetop. Okay, it was so great, it was so <sighs> perfect, and it was just the right amount of crisp and the cheese was melted. And then I was like, this is the best grilled cheese sandwich. And you don't have to watch it. You put it in the thing, you go about your business and it's fabulous. Okay, and so about those commenters. So there was one guy who comes in and says, I don't know what that was, but it's not a grilled cheese. And I'm like, um, the bread was perfectly toasted. Mm -hmm. The cheese was melted. Um, you actually do not make a grilled cheese on a grill. Okay. That's true, see? It's all semantics, you know? <laughs> uh, that's amazing. What is, has been your favorite air fryer experiment? Has it been the, was it the crackers and cheese? I, I know. You know what, it really, <laughs> <laughs> the crackers and cheese. No, you know what, I haven't even posted it, but I had made a packet of tomatoes. I had, I had some leftover pork that I wanted to eat. I actually had some pork belly. And I was like, and I had these grape tomatoes right at the end of a, a little carton. So I took the grape tomatoes. I had a foil packet. I put some garlic and some chili flakes mm. and olive oil. I wrapped it up. I put it in the air fryer and it was the perfect quick sauce to go on my pork belly. Ooh. So you know that you're going to be seeing that because now what I'm going to do is do like this idea of papillote. So taking fish and other ingredients and make a packet, put it in my air fryer and just pull it out and boom, no cleanup. Ooh. I'm just gonna dump that on my plate. Okay. This is my well, speed. Uh, <laughs> this is my speed. Cause I don't really love the kitchen but I like ways to make it easier. So for somebody like me who, I have all these ingredients, like how do you get inspired to just start mixing stuff and trying things out? Like, is there a good way to start? Well, I think, um, it's, it's, it's interesting because this is where I live. So um, for me to look at ingredients, I see the possibilities. For someone yeah. who doesn't like to cook, I don't want them to feel badly by like, I see nothing, you know, because that's real. Mm -hmm. I think take um, vegetables, a sheet pan, like what, what do you have? This It's easier, like what do you have in your kitchen right now? I got a lot what, of frozen vegetables, a lot of frozen vegetables. I got a full spice rack, so I got all the seasonings. I got some frozen salmon and some frozen chicken breast. I got some okay. rice. So like that that packet that I was talking about? Yeah. 
you can take your frozen fish, you can take um, some spices, you can take the frozen vegetables, thaw them first, toss them with the spices, some butter or oil, and put them around that fish and make that packet, put it in your air fryer. That will be a meal. Add a little bit of wine, because you probably have that, and that is going to be delicious. I do have the wine, Carla. That's easy. <laughs> Uh, I love how you're sharing these recipes and you're you're doing that now with uh, this with Amazon Live, right? So I saw mm -hmm. you cooking with Billy Porter and this is a new thing you're doing. So uh, why did you want to bring people into your kitchen and then bring in some of your friends too to help cook these meals? Well, I think this is a way to stay in touch with people. I think there is uh, a sense of community when there's cooking. There's one thing to break bread together, but here we may, may not be able to come together and break and bread, but we can make bread together. Hmm. So it's an idea of, look, he's cooking in his kitchen or I'm cooking with a friend in their kitchen and we're comparing. And because it is a different kitchen and different ingredients, we can have that inspiration. And so I think that it's real. I mean, it's happening live and it's real and it's inspiring. And I think that people want something uplifting and fun to watch. And mm -hmm. that's really why I do it more than anything. Um, sometimes I actually like just cooking alone. I don't listen to music in the kitchen as much as I love to dance because I like to hear the sounds of the food. Mm. But it's also fun to connect with my friends, especially somebody like Billy who loves to cook. He and sing too. Now, I don't mind being sang too <laughs> when I'm cooking, which was amazing. When he started singing too, I just stopped everything and just listened. Girl, I mean, who needs Spotify when Billy Porter is on the other line? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, know, that's I know, I know. So that's what I'm going to do is for Gen Youth, and you talked about No Kid Hungry, and Gen Youth is raising money for all of those kids who are having to depend on mm -hmm. the meals from the schools. Um, and, and I will be cooking with an NFL player. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, it's cool that you have sort of a charitable angle to each of these episodes too. Why mm -hmm. was that important for you? Well, a lot of the fundraisers were canceled and um, these organizations depend on those fundraisers for their budgets to, to keep going. I mean, we talk about a lot of the effects of the pandemic. I mean, restaurants are closing, um, hospitality companies are struggling and closing. Um, but there are also all of these um, organizations, that's, organizations that do such great work and it, without their budgets, they can't continue that work, which means that the community is in, even stressed further. Mm -hmm. So the other things that are happening outside of the pandemic will continue to happen. And so they need, they need funding. You know, I didn't even think about that, how many spring galas there are and all of those events, they plan all year for these events. And just like that, they have to find another way to, to raise money. Exactly. And uh, I know, you know, a lot of restaurants are struggling. And so do you have a message to, to anybody out there on just how to help their local restaurants or the local waiters and waitresses? Because that community is really struggling right now. Yeah, so there are funds. Um, you know, I do cameos as well. And so on April 14th through the 16th, all of the cameos that I do will go toward a particular fund. And mine is going toward restaurant workers. You can get um, gift cards, even if they're never used, just buy gift cards for your favorite restaurants. Um, you can also order food for pickup. You know, they have contactless pickup. And if it's more than you could eat yourself, order for someone else. If mm -hmm. they, if things are being delivered, just order food for people. And especially if people are shut in. And so the mm -hmm. food can be left. I, I think I think in some apartment buildings is being left downstairs. Mm -hmm. And so the delivery person doesn't come into the building. And um, so there, there are different ways to help. And I think yeah. to help while also thinking about someone else. Yeah, and you can also order those meals and send them to hospitals or to any yeah. other first responders any of those essential workers, you know, a lot of them don't have time to stop and, and eat meals. And so I know there's been a lot of people helping out that way, which has just been really beautiful to see. You have just given me such a great idea because I have a um, Chipotle card mm. and every year I get a party. I mean, I can actually have a thing for 50 to 100 people. I should totally, oh my gosh, That's I awesome. should totally book it and send it to a hospital. Yeah. Brittany. Oh my gosh, look at that. I Thank love you. that. 
I love that. That's beautiful. Look at this. <laughs> and and so you're cooking with um, all these different people now, mm -hmm. um, virtually. Is yeah. there like a dream virtual cooking guest that you would like to um, cook with? Gosh, okay. Outside of Billy Porter. Um, you know who I would love to, I was thinking about this the other day. I would like to cook with Octavia Spencer. Yes. And, um, you know, we had cooked together on the chew mm -hmm. and she was like, she doesn't cook that much. And I think people are finding that because they're being forced to pay attention to their self care and mm -hmm. cooking is a part of that, that they're like, I'm not so bad at this. And so the last time that she was saying, I don't really cook well, I think I'd like to cook with her. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. And I like the reason why, because it's about empowering people and inspiring people to like get in the kitchen and experiment. And it's like, if not now, when? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. And so what else are you looking uh, forward to trying or experimenting with during this sort of time of introspection? Okay, can I? Um, so there's something that I've always wanted to do. And, you know, I'm self-editing here, you know, when I'm talking, <laughs> I'm like, okay, wait, because I'm Enneagram 7, there's so many different things. I'm always, <laughs> I always wanted to, but I always wanted to do audible books. So one of the things that I think I would love to do is to read from cookbooks, like to read oh. the um, stories. And I think I'm going to have a particular time and just use this time and not, it's, it's sort of cooking, but food on a different in a different way. And so mm -hmm. people read cookbooks and I love reading to people. I love people reading to me. So I think I'm going to read to um, my followers um, like from these cookbooks. Yeah. I'm do you have, to, I'm going to do it today. <laughs> do you have a cookbook that you want to start with? Um, I may start with mine, but okay. you know, I read through Rachel Ray's cookbook when she turned turning 50 and she has a lot of wonderful stories in there that I don't people I don't think people know about her and so it was just a great book and then there's um there is what, what was the book that I was thinking about oh shoot the, the Charleston Kitchen mm. um I, I'm just gonna go through my library of cookbooks and, and pull from them you know I love that and it also highlights the the chefs so Jessica Harris has like 10 cookbooks I would love to read from hers because she's such a great storyteller. Although I can't get that voice. I can read <laughs> like Jessica Harris and she has that great gravitas of a voice. Are you somebody who uh, makes other chefs recipes? Yeah. Like, do you experiment and go in and just try theirs and mix and try your own? And Absolutely. Well, you know, again, self-editing in my head. Um, <laughs> when i was going to interview rachel ray about her cookbook it was the first cookbook honestly that i read from cover to cover i mean every single word every single half cup everything normally i go through and i look at the cookbook i'll read you know the intro and i'll look at some of the recipes but i don't read them all yeah. uh, mark Bittman's um how to grill everything uh that was one but i didn't read every single word mm -mm. But I do tend to look at the picture to get inspiration without following the recipe, unless mm -hmm. I am having to cook with them or or uh, review the recipe. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I'm reviewing yeah. the recipe, I will cook exactly the way that it is done. Hmm. That's so cool. That's really. I just am interested in hearing that process for somebody who is a professional. How you sort of integrate other people or kind of get inspiration from them. That's really fascinating. Yeah, but I think it's a way to get to know people because yeah. I mean, I know how I would cook, but let's say Bobby Flay cooks completely differently than I do. You know, um, Tanya Holland, she's a chef out on the West Coast and, and she's always talked about um, lighter soul food. And then I have my book, um, um, Carl Hall Soul Food Every Day in Celebration, but mm -hmm. Tanya might do it very differently. So I want to get to know her through her food. And the way, way that I can do that if I don't go to a restaurant is to do her recipe the way that she's written it. I love that, getting to know somebody through their food. And I think you've been able to reach your audiences like that because we've gotten to know you through the, the food you make. And, and now we're getting to know you even more by watching you cook with some of these guests yeah. on your Amazon live show. So how do we find out more information about when you're going to do your next one? 
Munich Famous on Life. So I'll definitely put it on my page. I'll have it on Instagram and Facebook. I will post it. It's going to be, uh, I think, in about a week. Okay. And um, yeah, it should be it should be really really fun. I I, I think that um, and the recipe is only a vehicle to just let life happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, and just to connect, you know. And right now we need that more than ever. So yeah. thank you for entertaining us and feeding us and inspiring us to get in our kitchens. I definitely need inspiration. <laughs> well, thank you, Brittany, for the inspiration of your nook. Okay, I have some work to do back here. Oh my God, thank you so much. I can't wait to see it and the wallpaper. Let me know when that's done. We'll, yes. we'll, we'll FaceTime again. <laughs> okay. All right, Carla, we'll see you next time. Bye, girl. Bye. <laughs>